What's up guys? Uh, today it's Saturday morning. Cam and I just finished our run. We showering, cleaning, whatever. And I'm gonna have some coffee and we're gonna run through the UFC predictions for tonight or tomorrow morning in South African and European times. Just processing that coffee. Okay, in this, I mean, in this one, UFC Fight Night 172, Florida 2, it's Overeem, Alistair Overeem, this Walt Harris. We all know the very sad story of Walt Harris's daughter being kidnapped and murdered. Um, he's obviously coming in with a lot of anger and aggression. And Overeem is his usual cool, calm, collected self, we assume. What I'm also running through this card in the opposite direction. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. I'm only going to really look at the the top of the the fight card. Um, maybe one or two other fights further down. If there's anything that catches my eye, there's one. There's one fight that catches my eye there. Um, so moving on, <laughs> fight what main card, main event. Alistair Overeem, Walt Harris. We've got, as I said, obviously, Alistair Overeem is probably the most decorated heavyweight combat sports athlete of all time. He's won the K1, he's won Pride, he's won Strike Force. I don't think he's won Pride, but he competed at Pride. He's won Strike Force, he's won everything except for the UFC title. It's unlikely he's ever going to get that shot again at the UFC title. We'll get there at least. Um, but he is still technically one of the better strikers in the in the heavyweight division, even if he isn't Uberim anymore. He's probably got a better ground game or at least offensive ground game than Walt Harris. I don't even know too much about Walt. I just know that he is a powerful berserker. Like, that's his style. He comes in, he's aggressive. Um, my money's still on... Uh, like, I'm going with Walt Harris. Uh, not just because he's the betting favorite, which he is. Which is actually quite a surprise. Um, but because... Athletic, he's, he's much more athletic at this point. And over him, he's been, he's been dropped by Biggie Boy. He's been dropped by Naganu. I mean, he's been dropped by everyone recently. At some point. What's up? And he's like driven because he's like, of his daughter got kidnapped and shit. He's like on a mission. Cam's right. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but Cam and his Baywatch Speedo over there. <laughs> he's giving me a dance. He's got a hole in his Speedo just above his crack. It's great. Um, so, I think, yeah, we're going with Walt Harris on this one. Angeli, moving on, we've got. This is actually since the lockdown, uh, since the Florida spate of events. Claudia Gedelia, um, who I'm a big fan of, is fighting Angela Hill, who I'm also a big fan of, for very different reasons. Claudia, because she's aggressive and she's quite pretty, obviously. Um, but she, she like doesn't give a fuck. She was great against Joanna both times, but she just fell short the first time and the second time she got beat up, I think. I can't remember the, the title fight too well. But then we've got Angela Hill on the other side. And she's, she's a grinder. She's cool. She's a fucking cool chick. You watch her YouTube channel. She's a lot of fun. Um, I wonder if she's going to do like a dress up. She always does like cool Street Fighters. Does she? Yeah, she like dresses up like the people from Street Fighter. Oh, okay. it was I thought only Roxy did it. Nah, so Angela Hill did it as well. Angela, yeah, see, she's got a lot of personality. She's a lot of fun on YouTube channels great as I said um, she's been super active lately and she's I mean this is like the inside fighter and grappler versus the the outside striker grind horse he's gonna like if she gets Angela gets on top she's just gonna grind she's not looking to well not that she isn't looking to finish but it's not a specialty have you ever watched goof troop no like goofy's son Max he has a girlfriend she looks just like her dude just saying. She's Google it. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Goof Troop. I don't know about it. 
Um, I think you guys need to see Cameron in his Baywatch speedo though. Come on, Cameron. Come on, Cameron, quickly. Oh, it's even a speedo brand, not just a speedo. Look at that. That's fucking great. Cool. Moving on. Edison Barboza versus Dan Eager. Eiger? Eish. Anybody know how to pronounce his name properly? Um, so, Edison, this is... He's moved down to featherweight, which is super interesting. And it's actually very rare that anyone moves down to, especially strikers, move down to featherweight and do better. If you look at... Aldo did it now. Aldo did it better now, but he didn't even like, win. Well, Bosa's already like fucking so lean, dude. Like, he's already a big lightweight. Dude. Like the only guys that were like maybe bigger is like Khabib and... Yeah, man. You know? The problem a lot of people Kevin make... Lee. Yeah. There's only two guys who are like really bigger than him that I can think of. A lot of people like deplete themselves to get lighter and then they think they're going to be stronger and then in actual fact they can't perform. So it's, it's always a slippery slope and you can see if they do it right, you know. Mm. Do you want to sit on camera? No, I'm in my speedo. They might judge me. No, well, they won't even they'll just see your upper body. Moving over, Cameron's joining us, guys. <laughs> Giving us some insight. King Cam. Cool. Let's just make us a bit more visible. Yeah, guys. Um, so, Barbosa, like, we know how to beat him. Like, put him on his back foot. Don't, foot, don't ever let him put his set to his feet. Barbosa. And don't let him set up his rhythm for kicking. Make him fight on the back foot. If you put pressure and he's on the back foot the whole time, he can't get his kicks off. Like, look at Gaethje, what Gaethje did there. Even uh, Kevin, Kevin, all Kevin Lee. Same thing, though. So, so, except the, Kevin did get fucking rocked, something stupid, yeah? Yeah, like, well, Khabib also got rocked. But he still ended up with the same, <laughs> same pattern to beat him. Check this chick's dog's outfit. It's very cute. <laughs> so, I mean, like, Dan has a very clear path to victory here. And he's actually a featherweight, as he's not struggling with a weight cut. And he's a smart dude. Um, for those that don't know, he's, he's part of, um, he's, he's actually a manager of a lot of UFC fighters. He works with Ali Abdul Aziz. He's part of that whole company. Um, he's also, but he's also a top, like a top fifteen ranked UFC featherweight. Like that's huge. It's wild, yeah. Uh, Dad's been doing well. He's never like winning super convincingly, but he's winning. Yeah. Fine. Which is you know an impressive thing at a top fifteen. It's crazy. There's a lot of guys like that. Eh? Dominic Cruz, DC, him. Guys who all have. Um, guy fought Barbosa as well. Um, Reddit, Paul, uh, oh, Paul Falder. Yeah, you know, they're all fucking nuts in there. Elite level athletes and still running a side hustle yeah. in the industry. It's all some other side hustle. But that's, I guess, the trait of like winners. Yeah. Is that no, you're, But I guess also. Connor's got seven different side hustles. He's got a management <laughs> company, he's got yeah. proper 12. Yeah, true. I don't know what Khabib does on a side hustle wise. He's Khabib, dude. He just does Khabib stuff. It's the ego. Khabib stuff only. Yeah. Living <laughs> like in a mountain, train with a hundred guys. Okay, so I mean... I, I'm taking... It's, it's a weird one. I'm going with Dan Eager for the upset, guys. Like, Barboza, he's on a three or four fight losing streak. He tried to get out of his contract so he didn't have to... So he could try and earn more money and stuff. But that didn't happen. That was a weird situation, eh? Yeah. He tried to go free, test free agency, but he couldn't get out of his contract. And I think he's in a weird spot now. And I think he might even, like, this is controversial to say, but he kind of really wants to get out of UFC, it seems. So maybe he's going for the loss. I don't maybe he want, like, no one I don't ever think wants anyone to lose. will go in there trying to lose. Like, ah, fuck this. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, moving on. Christoph Jotko versus Eric Anders. Are you just swiping? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, is that what you're doing? Yeah. To the left, to the left. This is kind of like a care, don't care episode. Um, Eric Anders, he's obviously the more athletic dude. He's, he throws very minimal combos. It's always like one hit knockouts when he does land. And I think that's like a 30% rates maybe 60 percent rates it's quite a big difference um fighting christoph Jotko from poland fighting but 
training out of American top team in Florida. He had a really good run in the beginning. I think it was like six or seven fight win streak, but it was very like standard um, meat and potatoes, like average boxing, takedown, wrestle. And that's how he won every fight. And then I think he came up again. I don't know, I can't remember what happened. And he got, I think he got KO'd like two fights in a row. Um, fact check me guys. Are you talking about me? Yoko. <laughs> Yoko. Yoko is who Soldier Boy was supposed to make his debut against. Oh, okay. Actually. I don't know what happened there. He got injured or something. And then Soldier Boy fought some other Polish dude. Um, so, like, Yoko has looked way better on his feet than his last outing. But again, he also only squeaked by a split decision. Um, I'm going with Eric Anders, who's two to one underdog so that's pretty cool to make some big money on him i think yeah i'm gonna bet on like most of the underdogs except for the like ones that are obvious hopefully yeah. make some mula okay then the opening fight on the main card we've got marlon vera who's really dope he's fighting song yadong i have no idea anything about song yadong i've read up a little bit I on need, like bloody elbow i need pictures bro I'm he's like got a visual learner <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> he's got you know he's he's got a bit of striking, a bit of a bit of everything. But like Marlon Vera's ground is fucking great. He's just been submitting Oaks left, right, and center. Um, I'm putting my money on him for the win, even though again he's the underdog somehow. Looking at these odds and betway, that's nuts. And then probably the fight I'm most excited for is Matt Brown versus Miguel Beza. Miguel Beza, I don't know fuck all about. He's, he's a, but he's, yeah, he's got some good knockouts and stuff. But he's fighting Matt Brown, the immortal. Yeah, man. Matt Brown, the I will destroy you with an elbow, San Diego, and cause more CTE to Diego Sanchez than anybody else has caused to Diego Sanchez. One of my favorite fights was here with him was against Eric Silva. And Eric Ooh, Silva was nuts. Nice. And Eric was like that up and coming. Yeah, dude, he was time. like the guy. Oh. Gonna be the guy. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Oh, that's the biggest failed prospect, huh? Yeah. Off. Oh, there's many, but no. But he had, like he had the good looks. Like he was. He's Paulo Costa point one. Like Paulo <laughs> Costa's him point two. Are you? Know? Yeah. <laughs> Chisel good looks, good fighting. Just never managed to put it together. Whereas Paulo is there, except for his shoulder issues. Um, I'm going over Matt Brown. Like he's a vet. He's called the Immortal One for a reason. He died. You can't Remember? kill. Can't kill him, man. Yeah, man. That I mean, the dude's got an inspirational story. He went to prison. He died. How did he die again? I think drug overdose. Okay, and came back to life and been killing it in the UFC. Look, he's never going to be a title fight, but he's always going to be that fun action fighter that we want to we want to see, fucking doing it. And I think he's going to win again. I hope so. I like him. Is he? Where's he based? Is he Florida based or? I'm not sure. I don't think he's in Florida. Um, so I'd like to do okay because I, I, I'm also I'd like to check out the odds on Florida based fighters like Ameri like you'll notice there's a lot of American top team athletes on these cards yeah and a lot of hard knocks 365 partly because it's a lot easier for them to Just be there and do it because all the events are obviously in the same place in Florida so I'd like to see those win loss ratios I don't know if anyone out there has got those odds maybe I can pull it up That'd be quite interesting to look at. Ask Google. Google's got all the answers. Okay, we'll, go, we'll, we'll try and figure it out for you later. Most. Some basic stats. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Um, any other fights on this card that you're interested in? Uh, like uh, Darren Elkins versus Nate Landwehr. I don't know. Uh, like Darren's like a tough AS, SOB, you know. He's like also American top team, I think. I, did you start by the, the main event? No, the main event. Yeah, main event now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just trying to do things in reverse, maybe see where it goes. Okay. Reverse engineer things, see if we do better. Nice. Yeah, man. I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a hundred rand bet on the whole card, and I'm just gonna go underdogs, except for the ones that I'm like, this guy's gonna win. Okay, let's do it now, quick. Let's let's see. Checking out Bet Bet Betway. Betway. Um, Walt Harris, Alistair Irving. Walt Harris. Walt Harris, cool. Angela Hill, Claudia Gedelia. Claudia. Dan Eag, Edson Barboza. Who's the underdog? 
Uh, Dan Eag slightly, like I'm going to go Dan Eag just because it's Barbosa's first time at featherweight and he's hot cold. So. Yeah. Yatko Anders. Eric, your boy, Anders. Who's the underdog? Uh, Anders, actually. Nice. I'm going with Anders. <laughs> Marlon Vera, Song Yadong. Dong. You want Dong, huh? Yeah. What about Dong? I just... He's got power, though. It's good to know you're all about Dong. Yeah, I'm all about the Dong. Not just see. Miguel Beza, Matt Brown. Matt Brown. Matt like Brown, yeah. Man. Kevin Holland, Anthony Hernandez. I don't know. Who's the underdog? I'll go with the underdog. Kevin here. Holland. There we go. Nate Landwehr versus Darren Elkins. Darren Elkins. Mar Mara Romero Morella versus Cor Courtney Casey Sanchez. I don't know. Who's the underdog? Uh, Ma Mara Romero Morella. I see. If we can't even pronounce the name, then we, <laughs> then we just bet on the underdog. Okay, cool. Dante Mayers versus Rodrigo Nasiento Ferreira. I might be pronouncing his name wrong. Very well. Very well. Cool. So if we bet a hundred bucks on that guys, on that full thing, then Cameron can retire on fifty thousand round. Is it fifty thousand? There we go. Cool. That's his, that's Cameron's bet. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I fucking hope that works. Yeah. That'll be sick. It's just crazy to to know like the opportunity is there. You know like. What is 100 rand, you know? What is 10 rand? It's, it's nothing, but if you bet on the whole card... Yeah, it's dropped down to 40 grand. Doesn't matter. Some of the odds changed a bit. 40 grand still. It's still good if we win. Rent paid, deposits, bond paid for the two or three in a couple months. Yeah, oh, man. Cool, guys. That's, that's mine and Cameron's odds. <laughs> <laughs> that's our betting advice for... UFC Fight Night Florida 2, Harris vs. Overeem or Overeem vs. Harris. Yeah. Let us know who you're betting with. Yes, it's comment below. I like Overeem, man. I've, I'm very biased towards him, but he's let me down many times in the past, you know. The one time he stood out for me was the Brock Lesnar fight, and since then it's just been. It just, it just fails when he gets to that like top. Yeah, he's no last, longer the demolition man. I miss the demolition man. Give him horse meat, man. <laughs> I miss him before the steroids even. When he was in Pride, he's walking like with a fucking hammer. Yeah, when he fought Walk, Vito. He walked in with Molinier. <laughs> that was fucking great. Molinier, yeah. Is that how you say it? Molinier. Molinier. I thought it was Mew Mew. Mew 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 Mew what? Nin Nin Cats. No. Have you seen the Nin Nin Cats? No. I can't play it because I can't put this on YouTube then. Oh, okay. I'll play it afterwards. Cool. But Nin Nin Cats. It's fucking great. Okay, that's it. That's all from King King, uh, King Cam and Gaijutsu. Enjoy the fights, my friends.